out as long as you want for questions at the end. So I get paid by the question. Uh, and, you know, the first question, people usually say, is that thing real? And yes. That's it. Tour's over. We'll see you later. That's it. <laughs> no, but uh, that is a Saturn V rocket. It is real. And, uh, you know, this one was next in line if we needed one more. We launched 13 of these rockets all about 50 years ago. And uh, speaking of anniversaries, you came out of that pre-show where they showed the launch of the Apollo 8. It was the first time humans arrived in another world. It's the first time we orbited the moon. And uh, that happened, that arrival at the moon happened 54 years ago tonight. Wow. So what a what a cool time to do it. Yeah. The rest of the world is thinking about Christmas Eve, and I'm thinking about Apollo 8. Uh, and they're both very special. You know, when we launch people on top of a rocket this big, we don't do it lightly. It is such an emotional, powerful experience in every sense of the word. Uh, there's a lot of power coming out the back end here. So the astronauts ride on the pointy end, far away from these engines. So they ride inside a command module like this one here. Uh, they don't get the whole volume. Uh, you would just be riding inside the shiny silver cone. Man. Three people in there. That's a tiny thing. Do you want to go? Maybe. Yes. No. You got a good view out the window. <laughs> we'll talk about what that view did for us. It was powerful. Uh, but speaking of power, uh, you've got these F1 engines. They're just absurdly powerful. When we launch rockets to go to the moon, it's so loud. It feels like an earthquake under your feet. It really is a seismic event. And, uh, you know, if you're shouting encouragement at the rocket, you won't even be able to hear your voice coming out of your own mouth. I mean, it's so loud. It just shakes everything. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going back to the moon. We just did that again. Uh, not too long. You see the second stage here. We switched to a different fuel at this point. We were burning kerosene before on the first stage. And now we switch to hydrogen fuel because it's a lot more efficient. But there are trade-offs. It's also a lot more difficult to work with. And so, uh, you know, it's a difficult thing to get a hydrogen engine running, especially 60 years ago when this was designed. Uh, and we build off the shoulders of giants. The engineering we figured out for this engine continues on into the hydrogen engines that we're using to go to the moon today. Thank you. Uh, I have a question too. Why did they even go to the moon just to show Russia the people? The moon missions were fueled by the Cold War and the space race. Uh, when we entered the space race, we were behind in round one. We launched our satellite months after the Soviet Union launched theirs. Because when we were building these satellites, we didn't know we were racing yet. And the, the general public, the concerns of the public and journalists essentially started the race. Uh, and so, yeah, we had to launch a satellite. And we finally did it a few months after the one. And then we knew round two in the space race would be launching a human. And uh, we were three weeks behind in that, so we were catching up. But still, three weeks behind it was a bummer for a lot of people in the U.S. <laughs> so, some NASA people met with the president, uh, Kennedy, in the White House. And they said, okay, we need to figure out a finish line in the space race. And we need to position that line and make it so difficult that the U.S. can cross that finish line first before the Soviet Union. They decided on landing on the moon. They said less than nine years from now. And that was a really crazy challenge because we'd only had one person in space. And it was a 15 minute long flight. All of a sudden we're going to the moon. Uh, so it was an awesome challenge. But you know, it was fueled by Cold War. But the science that we did along the way was worth it. Inspiration was more than worth it. And ultimately, the satellites and all are basically some common research. Yeah. Today we have satellites yeah, sort of the, the echoes of the Apollo program go out into every industry that we create a technology that everybody uses. Yeah.
टॉक विथ एस्ट्रोनॉट जो अभी आप लोगों ने देखा ये एक मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड कोवेटेड इवेंट है नासा कैनेडी स्पेस सेंटर जो भी विजिट करते हैं सो so, इसमें वी कुड एक्चुअली टॉक टू एन एस्ट्रोनॉट एंड लर्न अबाउट डिफरेंट थिंग्स इन द स्पेस मिशन एंड सम ऑफ द थिंग्स बिहाइंड द मून मिशन वॉट ही थिंग्स एंड डिफरेंट क्वेश्चन अबाउट द सैटर्न फाइव रॉकेट नाउ वी आर एंटरिंग द अपोलो मिशन एग्जिबिट्स सो ये एक एग्जिबिशन है जहाँ पर अपोलो uh, मिशन का जो कि मून मिशन था उसके डिफरेंट एग्जिबिट्स शो किया जाता है जिसमें वैरायटी ऑफ आइटम्स है इसमें है एस्ट्रोनॉट्स ने जो ड्रेस यूज़ किया था उनके जो ग्लव्स हैं जो डिफरेंट इक्विपमेंट वो मून में ले गए थे जिससे लूनर सैंपल कलेक्ट किया था बिकॉज ये सब कुछ बहुत ही डेलीकेट और स्पेशल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैं चाहे तो जो उनके ड्रेसेस हो चाहे जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट से वो सैंपल कलेक्ट करते हो सैंपल रखने का जो जगह है बिकॉज मून से जब उसको लाया जाता है तो इट हैज़ टू बी स्पेशली प्रिजर्व बिफोर इट कैन एंटर द लैब इन नासा सो ये सब अलग अलग चीज़ें रखा हुआ है तब के कुछ कुछ कंप्यूटर कंट्रोल जो उस टाइम यूज़ हुआ था नाइनटीन में लूनर uh, सैंपल रखने के लिए बैग एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट इनमें से सबसे ज़्यादा जो इंटरेस्टिंग है वो लूनर सैंपल इट है जो मून से लाया गया रॉक एंड अदर सैंपल्स हैं सो वो यहाँ पर देखने को मिलता है और ना कि जस्ट हम उसको देख सकते हैं वी कैन रियली टच इट सो दैट्स अ वेरी बिग थिंग यू कैन एक्चुअली टच वन ऑफ द रॉक दे हैव मेड इट समथिंग लाइक यू कैन टच एंड यू कैन फील इट यू कैन just enter your hand and touch it so that's a very good thing and of course there are many other exhibits jisme you can get an idea about the uh, lunar mission moon mission jaise ye gloves hain and aur bhi cheeze hain jisko uh, aap dekh sakte hain unke bare mein detailed description diya hua hai so this is one big hall jo uh, exhibits jahan par rakha hua hai एंड ऑफकोर्स कुछ फ़ोटोज़ हैं उसके साथ मोस्टली जो ऐसे चीज़ें हैं जो आप देख के फील कर सकते हैं सो लूनर सैम्पल जैसे मैंने कहा लूनर सैम्पल इज़ वन ऑफ द मेन अट्रैक्शन इन इन कैनेडी स्पेस सेंटर यहाँ पर डिफरेंट एस्ट्रोनॉट्स के ड्रेसेस हैं उनके यूज़ किया हुआ गियर्स जिसको इन जनरल कहते हैं दो गियर्स आर अवेलेबल फॉर पीपल टू सी एंड ऑफकोर्स दिस इज़ लूनर सैम्पल यू कैन सी इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू जो रखा गया है प्रिजर्व करके ठीक से दैट्स वन ऑफ द लूनर सैम्पल एक रॉक है एंड ऑफकोर्स दिस इज 3.7 बिलियन इयर्स ओल्ड क्योंकि मून में ऑफकोर्स जो कलेक्ट करके ला रहे हैं दैट्स लाइक वेरी ओल्ड सो लूनर सैम्पल मल्टीपल है यहाँ पर मल्टीपल अलग अलग लूनर सैम्पल हैं एंड कुछ टोटली कवर्ड बाई ग्लास है एंड ये टच द मून सेक्शन जो है इसमें यू कैन टच द रॉक फ्राम मून जैसा मैंने कहा सो so, ये एक अच्छा चीज़ है जैसे आप देख सकते हैं कौशिक की पहुँच गई है उसको टच करने एंड दिस इज़ द रॉक जो आप हाथ अंदर डाल के रॉक को टच कर सकते हैं एक्चुअली एंड फील हाउ इज इट हाउ इज इट फीलिंग काफ़ी स्मूथ है मैंने भी हाथ डाल के देखा था तो काफ़ी स्मूथ सरफेस है सो दिस इज़ वन थिंग सो ओवरऑल इसके बाद हम लोग आगे जो देखेंगे वो एक शो होगा विच इज़ अ शो ऑन लूनर लैंडिंग सो लूनर लैंडिंग कैसे हुआ था लूनर लैंडिंग के बाद वहाँ पर कैसे व्हीकल लेके एक्सप्लोर किया गया सो so, इसका एक शो होगा जिसको हम इसके बाद देखेंगे लूनर थिएटर है इसका नाम जहाँ हम इसके बाद ये एग्जीबिशन के बाद जाएंगे और शो देखेंगे सो so, वो इस पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो का लास्ट आइटम होगा बट वो शो बहुत ही अच्छा है जिसमें एक्चुअली लूनर लैंडिंग और जो सराउंडिंग इवेंट है सारा दिखाया गया है और ये एक फन uh, एक्टिविटी है जिसमें लूनर uh, जो सरफेस है उसको एक तरह से यहाँ पर बनाया गया है सिमुलेट किया गया है सो वेन यू वॉक एक्चुअली इट लुक्स लाइक यू आर सेटिंग योर फूट ऑन द लूनर सर्फेस सो ये भी एक फन एक्टिविटी है फॉर 
किड्स एंड लाइक मैं भी उस पर चल रहा हूँ आप देख सकते हैं तो आ, ये जस्ट एक चीज़ है जो पीपल कैन एंजॉय एंड नाउ राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस इज द लूनर थिएटर हम लोग अब वहाँ पर जा रहे हैं आ, शो देखने और शो आपके साथ भी शेयर करते हैं A problem with the onboard computer. The astronauts have rehearsed for thousands of possible malfunctions, but not this one. It had been considered too unlikely. Seconds seem like hours as everyone struggles to remember the meaning of a 1202 program alarm. The deadline to safely aboard is vanishing fast. Well, really the 1202 program alarm. 1202 means the Eagle's onboard computer is overloading. This means Houston is blind, unable to make navigation corrections or interpret the data coming from Eagle's computer. Armstrong and Aldrin are on their own. Mission Control decides they can go ahead. We're going to fly. We're going on land. If the data link doesn't fail again. We got we're going on 1000 feet and Neil Armstrong can see that the computer is proposing to put them down in a dangerous place. That landing site is full of boulders. If they land there, they will never take off again. At 350 feet, Armstrong ignores his computer navigation and veers away from the rocky landing site with no time to explain to mission control. Okay, I'll fly controller and cut. In mission control, everybody is stunned. At 300 feet, the Eagle has left its flight plan and taken off at full speed across the face of the moon. Eagle Houston is descending to fuel. Monitor over. 90 seconds of fuel remaining. Now less than 200 feet, and the Eagle is too low to safely abort back into orbit. They call this part of the flight plan Dead Man's Curve. No level. All that's left for mission control is to read off the fuel remaining in seconds. 60 seconds. The entire moon landing has come down to two men and one minute. Forward. Forward. A short time later, history is made again. Okay, now we're coming down the ladder now. For one incredible moment, we are one people with one history, watching our destiny unfold. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was a moment shared by an entire world. With these first steps, mankind stood on the highest ground. and we saw our planet as our home port in the endless ocean of space there was something which was surprising to me that occurred as i was standing on the surface just after we had landed i'd gone down standing on the surface and looking at planet earth for the first time uh seeing the beauty seeing the the 
finiteness of it, the, the limits of it, uh, and realizing what a shame it was that people were confronting each other on that planet without realizing what it was doing to the planet. It was a very emotional moment for me. I actually shed a couple of tears. Uh, something totally unexpected for for an engineer, fighter pilot to be to be crying up quietly up there on the moon. Mankind had achieved a tenuous foothold in the heavens, and a new and exciting world lay waiting to be explored. The first mission had stayed for only one day, but over the next three and a half years, five more Apollo missions visited the moon, and with each one, we stayed longer, roamed further, and discovered more. I never thought when I was a kid building rockets, you know, in high school, that we would go to the moon you know, before the end of the, of, of the century. I mean, I thought that was something that was way in the future, fantasy. I was rolling on the moon one day, in a very early morning, and I saw this number of, hey, I need a fast, hey, rock! That is the best example we got. Now go stub your toe. We've got to understand that as a people, we need to stretch. We need to reach beyond our grasp. We need to strive to do things that seem impossible because in the accomplishment of them, we move society forward. Why isn't the future of this place is just absolutely incredible? One of the astronauts has said those hills that we climbed give our children and grandchildren a different perspective that they see the mountains that we couldn't see.